Hi, this is Kevin Deal. Today we're going to talk about the Prima Luna Evolution 400 integrated amplifier. This is a very, very exciting time. This amplifier replaces the Dialog Premium HP, considered by so many audiophiles to be the best tube integrated amp on the planet regardless of price. And I have to tell you something, when they said they were going to replace it, I thought, what can they do? What can they do? The HP was perfection in every way, shape, and form, but improvements they did. I mean, the creativity of the people at the home office in the Netherlands never ceases to amaze me. So I'm gonna break it down for you. I'm gonna make a comment about how it compares to another amplifier made by another manufacturer that sells for $9,000, a very, very, very big name. And it's not meant to be a knock against that brand. It is not, because it's a very good amp and it sounds really good. But I want to show you and explain to you clearly what makes a Prima Luna different. You need to look inside and see what you're getting for your money because it's important and you need to know and that's why we break it down for you. So we start off with the power supply. Power supplies are critically important and the HP and the new Evo 400 use a massive toroidal power transformers. Why is that? The power of an amplifier is not a big deal. It doesn't give you better dynamics. It doesn't give you better bass. Power is power, and all that counts is that you have enough power. What's really important is that you drop the noise floor. And power transformers are where manufacturers always cheat. Always, because it's the most expensive part of making an amp. The competitive amp for $9,000 weighs 36 and a half pounds. This weighs over 67 pounds, but not just that. The power transformer is a massive toroidal power transformer that they wind in-house. What's important about that? Toroidal power transformers don't radiate noise outside of the core of the donut. But to make sure that the transformer is as quiet as possible, they did a couple of cool things. Number one, they sealed it in a mu metal shield. And that keeps any kind of EMI or radiation from getting out and into the sensitive front end circuitry. The other thing that they did is they implemented something called uh, the AC offset killer. That's what this part is here with the yellow uh, boxes. The AC offset killer is something that Durab Audio, Prima Luna's parent company, invented many years ago. And in fact, that circuit was copied by an American company and they sold it as a little box separately for $399. What's it for? Regardless of the condition of your electricity, it's to help the transformer stay dead silent mechanically. It reduces transformer hum. You can't power your way to good sound. You have to drop the noise floor, and that's what this is all about. And the Evo 400 has new improvements to the power supply, so it's even better than the HP, and that was state of the art. Looking at the output transformers, speaking of transformers, that is the key to a tube amp. Some of the worst bass I've ever heard was from a, a pair of tube amplifiers that were 175 watts per channel, and they were big mono blocks. The reason that they did not have good bottom end was because they had cheap output transformers. Prima Luna designs and winds their own output transformers in-house, and that is the key. It does not matter how much power you have, if the output transformer will not communicate bandwidth, then you're not gonna get good bass. And Prima Lunas are famous for having amazing bottom end. And again, they are big power transformers because they did not cheap out. Now looking at the back here, you're gonna see something, a bunch of blue boxes. This is really cool. Some amplifiers use selector switches and selector switches are not your friend. It's just like the old TV set, the old TV tuners, you know, you had to use tuner cleaners on them and one channel would bleed over to the other channel for those of you old enough to remember. The best way to do it is get rid of the switches and the little wiper blades that they have and use relays. These relays are not any relay. They're made in Japan by Takamasawa, a division of Fujitsu. They're guaranteed for 50,000 openings and closings. So what happens is this. You hit CD, that relay closes, boom, it gives you the best contact. All the other relays are left open. That helps to reduce bleed over from your other inputs. And I know you've heard that before, where you can hear your tuner bleeding over. There is no way to eliminate that completely. Let's be real. But you can reduce it. 
Something else that they did that's really, really cool is underneath each one of these inputs, there's a little circuit. And that circuit is designed to present a very high and steady impedance to all of your source components. If you have a tube phono stage or a tube deck, they like to see that. They don't want to see a really low input impedance. Now, being real about this again, I don't know of another manufacturer that does this. And I will bet you it costs maybe 50 cents per input to add that feature. But these manufacturers, especially the biggest companies, they have got their cost and build sheets fine-tuned to the penny. Only Prima Linda does that, and in fact, they do it on their entire line of products. If we look over here, we're going to see great big Nichicon capacitors. Those are really badass. You're going to see new to this product is these capacitors up in the front end. These are tinfoil capacitors. They're branded Durosh, but they're made in a very, very special factory. I cannot tell you who they are, but this factory is in Switzerland. They don't produce for anybody else in the industry. And I'm going to tell you, they are absolutely amazing. And they are made in Switzerland, and they just have a sense of glory and humanity that is unbelievable. Um, the entire circuit is wired with Swiss-made, silver-plated, oxygen-free copper with a Teflon dielectric. You're going to notice that there's no printed circuit boards in the signal path. Why is that? Circuit boards are not your friend, especially if you're going to mount a tube socket to it. Tube sockets get hot. And if you wiggle a tube socket when it's really hot, you can end up cracking the traces. Traces are really thin most of the time. They're just not great. And for any of you guys that are technicians, you know what I'm talking about. You end up cracking a trace, then you have to take a piece of wire and you have to make little jumpers to repair the trace. And that's how all this stuff ends up in pawn shops and at Goodwill. Primalinas are built to last a lifetime. So not only do they have point-to-point -point wiring, but it's Swiss made silver-plated oxygen-free copper with a Teflon dielectric. That's what I'm talking about. Notice the pink resistors in the signal path? Those are TACMAN resistors. TACMAN is an audiophile-grade resistor made in Japan. They are literally custom-ordered resistors. They are made to order, and they're known for their low noise and linearity. Looking over here, oh, I want to show something else here. I want to look, I want to show you the tube sockets and how they're mounted to these panels. They're bolted into place and they're ceramic and they're fully ventilated because you want to make sure all that heat gets out of the chassis. And so again, it's built to last a lifetime. Over on the sides here, we have the secret sauce of Prima Luna. And that is adaptive auto bias. I've done a complete video on this, but I'm just going to say this to you. Adaptive auto bias is not about convenience. It is, it's about convenience because it really makes it nice. You have no maintenance. You have no adjustments. It extends the usable life of tubes. It makes everything automatic. I mean, literally, we have taken a Prima Luna amplifier and run eight different power tubes at once, and you'd never know that we were doing it because adaptive auto bias is so advanced. It looks at each tube constantly and instantly and adjust it to keep it in its perfect linear position. But when it's most effective is when you turn the music up, when the tubes are being pushed because it cuts distortion by over 50%. So it's really, really, really about sound and performance with adaptive auto bias. And you, you don't ever have to do anything. If a tube fails, there's a little red LED in front of each of the power tubes on other amplifiers, let's say that $9,000 amp I talked about just a moment ago, if you have a short, I'm telling you, it's going to break the amp. <clears throat> it's going to take out a screen resistor, it's going to take out a cathode resistor. That's just the way it is, and it's a trip to the shop. We don't want you to ever have to send this in for service. We want it to be built for a lifetime. So in the event of a tube problem, some type of a short, a relay opens up on the adaptive auto bias board, instantly putting it into protection. A little light lights up that says, this is the problem tube. Just take another tube, plug it in, and you're good to go. No muss, no fuss. You're going to notice that the front end has six 12AU7s, and compare that to the other product. The reason they use six 12AU7s is the ones that are in the center are the preamp tubes. 
The four tubes that are flanking it are what's called driver tubes. They drive the grids of the power tubes, right? So why do they do that and why does the other amplifier have only two tubes? The other amplifier is what has a hybrid front end, so they use FETs. And it's fine to do that. I don't care for it personally because I want the, the circuit to be pure tube. And in my opinion, the only reason to put an FET in there is if you want to save cost. There's no other reason because you can put an FET in there for just about two bucks. But to run four driver tubes, it's very expensive. You've got the tubes, you've got the sockets, you've got resistors, you've got all the wiring going to them. But it makes it a pure tube amplifier and that's how you get all of that glory. Talking about glory, let's look at the volume control up front. The volume control is a motorized ALPS blue velvet potentiometer. It is analog. Now it's tempting to use chips. I've looked up the part of the, vo the volume control part in the competitive amp, and that part is a chip that costs $2.50. Now there are ways to have electronic volume controls that are very esoteric and really amazing that don't sound like chips. But for me, you know what? I prefer uh, amplifiers that have an analog volume control. This part is very, very expensive. It's much more expensive than the competitive amp. Now, this is not only an amazing integrated amplifier. This is a world-class tube headphone amp. I want to say something to you. This is not this amplifier will run in triode and ultralinear. I've done a video on what that difference is. Most every amplifier built today is an ultralinear design or some twist of an ultralinear design. That's the most modern design. But this amplifier, Prima Luna, is the only brand that allows you to switch from ultralinear to full triode operation from the push button on the supplied remote control. Literally, you have two different amplifiers in one box. Triode is about having a warmer presentation, just that golden glow. For me personally, I use it when I have some of these 1970s recordings that are really kind of aggressive, like David Bowie, Ziggy Stardust, some of my Rolling Stones discs. I mean, they just kind of bug me a little bit. I pop it into Triode, boom, the little light changes on the front, and all that aggression goes away. I also like to run my amp and triode in the evening. And I, you'll also find out, this is funny, female ears are different than male ears. They have great sensitivity to top end response. So I found that a lot of women prefer the sound of triode. So getting back to how the headphone amp works, it's absolutely amazing. Look, most amplifiers on the market that have a headphone jack use a little cheap op amp to make it operate. I mean, that's how they do it because it can, it's a $5 solution. Remember this, headphones are speakers. They're just little speakers. So if you've got the best output transformers, then take advantage of it. But it was expensive to do because this is how Prima Luna did it. And this is really slick engineering. There's a pair of relays mounted in the back and there's a controller board up here in the front. When you switch to headphones, it closes the relays and sends the signal right off of the output transformers to a voltage divider network and then to the headphone amp. So you get all the glory of a pure tube headphone amp. Not only that, you can run it in triode or ultralinear. And that's really important because headphones can be you, that you can have listening fatigue. And so I love listening to headphones in triode. It's absolutely gorgeous. Now, they also added on the new Evo, they added a tape monitor out because there are some people that wanted to have that for whatever reason. Uh, you have uh, a preamp output jack. This is really cool. The uh, HP had a mono subwoofer out. Now it's a stereo uh, line level out that can be switched to mono. It's just a, the flip of a switch. So if you want a bi-amp with a solid state amp, you can do so. If you want to add a pair of powered subs, you can do that. Or if you want to run a single sub, you can do that. Just flip the switch. Very, very slick. Five coats of hand rub finish. Go look at the other products. You're going to see flat black or flat silver. Why do they do that? Because the metal works not very good. It covers up all the sins. You can't have poor metal work and do five coats of high gloss finish. 
And this new finish, they made it just a little bit darker. They kind of went back to the color that Primalinas were before. They just tweaked it a little bit and it's so, so gorgeous. The metalwork is also improved for the faceplate too. They rounded the edges and it's got a wonderful tactile feel to it. Same thing with the remote. The remote was improved. It's just a little bit trimmer now. It lost a few pounds, but it's still that fabulous machined aluminum. I mean, it's got a quality feel. It's got neoprene rings around the edge to protect your furniture. I mean, that's the kind of detail that Prima Luna is about. Don't buy something that's going to be tchotchke in 10 years. Prima Luna holds their value. That is a fact. I just went and I looked at a Prologue one. That was the first baby entry-level model Prima Luna that sold for $1,095 way back in 2003. One just sold about three weeks ago, a used one that is how many years old? It's old and it sold for $950 because Prima Luna products are built to last a lifetime. They have an intrinsic value. And that's what Prima Luna is about. It's not about tchotchke. That's why Prima Luna uses the tagline, music illuminated. Buy something that's worth owning. Buy something that's going to inspire you, not in five years, not in 10 years, but for the rest of your life. Thanks for listening.